Hello my soccer universe, yeah, 4 out of 5 now <laughs> for to end the club season for now uh, and we go in World Cup mode very very soon starting tomorrow. Um, but while I just did a video last week, um, it so much happened especially in the Eredivisie that I think it's fully warranted to talk about these two leagues. Not so much in Liga, except that we had a what I call a perfect 3-2 win for Marseille. What do I mean with a perfect win? I mean that uh, a win where there were two lead changes. A 3-2, if you go 1-0 up, 2-1 down, and 3-2, this is the perfect match because you went through all the emotions. It's just perfect. So that's why. Perfect, and it gives me also an opportunity to wear this beautiful OM jersey. Uh, also in France, uh, we had, surprisingly, all the big stars were playing for PSG this weekend, which I did not really expect because usually they uh, all have some phantom injuries ahead of a World Cup, but hey, credit where credit is due. However, the big one, uh, the big stories are definitely in the Eredivisie and we will spend uh, there where Last weekend, I was singing the praises on PSV, uh, how great they have been, and they deservedly beat Ajax. They should now probably be considered at least a serious contender, only to throw it away. And within two, within two, yeah, no, there was a makeup round, so within two match days, yeah, two and a half, one and a half match days, probably. We have a new lead in the Eredivisie, because uh, if PSV is faltering, you would think that Ajax is going to scoop in. No! It's Feyenoord. And Feyenoord have now a three-point lead in the Eredivisie. What a remarkable turnaround. And this, this, I think, no one really saw coming. We saw it's tied up there. But we always thought that Ajax just look a tad bit better than the rest of them. Then uh, PSV, uh, we knew, inconsistent. Feyenoord have been getting the point. So I don't know where this title race is going. And let's uh, go and see the two makeup uh, games are on the bottom with Ajax against Vitesse, a game that I thoroughly expected Ajax to win uh, because Vitesse have not been uh, really good. Tadic gives them an early lead, however, by the 74th, Vitesse had a 2-1 lead. And then only Luca, the first Italian to play in Holland, uh, gets a few minutes later the equalizer and there's no winner for Ajax. Definitely drop points. He's played right in the cards at that point. If Ajax would have won the one, they would have gone top of the table. That point meant that PSV are top. And Feyenoord followed that up with a 1-0 win over Cambuur. The goal already coming very, very early in the fourth minute. Uh, so things are getting tighter up top, but it got even better on the weekend because Ajax um, could have put pressure on everyone by just beating Emmen away from home, which you would normally totally uh, think that they would. Emmen, of course, their home uniform is a reverse Ajax, which is always in interesting. And Emmen took a seventh-minute lead uh, through Feldmatt. However, Taylor very quickly turned around in the 25th minute. Ajax had a comfortable 3-1 lead. They date and proceeded to throw away. And this is a sign that I've seen with Ajax that uh, there was a little bit too much contempt uh, often there in, in the play that they go out and play bright, bright, brightly get, get a lead and then in the second half they think they can go and do it in second gear. No, not this season around. This uh, Schröder's Ajax is not Ten Hag's Ajax. Uh, there is a lot of rebuilding and a lot of soul searching and, and, and so on. It's a very vulnerable Ajax, I have to say. And playing 3-3 in MN did not bode well. And so PSV really could have extended their lead against AZ in the best uh, in the top game of the round. <laughs> AZ means that one at PSV. Go figure. Yes, a Hakpo goal was scored and then disallowed um, in the 50-56. But it's one of those results. AZ had been trending in the opposite direction and now they get the win at PSV. It is such a crapshoot. At, at that point, it was all kind of level with the big chance for Feyenoord to go actually top. And they duly did this with a 5-1 win over Excelsior. Um, going down a goal in the fourth minute, however, in the 11th, Schimanski had it already on Kirkchew, again, Schimanski and Kirkchew, and then Walmark very late on, make it a proper scoreline. Meaning that going into the break, Feyenoord have a three-point lead up top. That no one saw coming. 
that absolutely no one saw coming. Uh, Ajax still the favorites, but you see how tight it meanwhile is. Actually, Fener slightly ahead of PSV. And AZ is also in the mix. Don't forget about those, 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 those guys. I think we may have a really, really exciting league. Uh, even Twente is not completely out, out of it. I also want to note that Sparta Rotterdam has been fighting against relegation uh, last uh, season. They're now up, to, up, up there with, with the European spots as well. So the Eredivisie is really, really, really exciting. How does the model based on the ratings see um, the season to pan out now Ajax ahead of Feyenoord and then PSV but it's rather 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 tight I would call it too close to call at this moment I'd said a distinct fourth place for now however the way they have been playing and surprising I mean they have already won against PSV they have won against Feyenoord so um did they also also, also beat Ajax I, I think they have also beaten Ajax so pretty big. I, no I, I think they lost to Feyenoord and they've beaten Ajax so they have the credentials there. This is a really, really wide open league. Uh, on the bottom, it's Iskambu and Volendam. Uh, it's a little bit too strong for them, but we have to see. There's also the question for the Conference League playoffs. Uh, spot 8 may, depending on how the cup goes, may or may not be enough. Uh, because there is a the clear cut of So here and Vane upwards uh, are the teams that will probably play for Europe and then eventually in Europe next uh, season. For the Eredivisie, I can also give you the next two sets of fixtures, which I will not be able to do for League 1. Uh, starting out with an interesting one, PSV against Sparta, for sure. Uh, Utrecht against Feyenoord is also not too bad. Uh, Nijmegen should lose to Ajax, but at this moment it's really, really hard uh, to say with all these shoots. And then we have Ajax against Twente. Twente is a team that's up there, so not an easy opponent. Um, whereas PSV and especially Feyenoord have rather easy opponents. So this is already the uh, second and uh, first and second week of January. We have the Eredivisie back. The last round in France cannot really tell you all that much, except that what I heard is that Nice probably should have won uh, at Lyon. Uh, a late, like I said, penalty gives them an equalizer. Even under Laurent Blanc, Lyon does not look right, and Nice probably should have won that one. Um, overall, Rennes uh, with a win over Toulouse. PSG, as I said, they played the Stars, uh, but the Stars didn't really score. Yeah, that first one, Mbappé. But there was no uh, superstar um, assisting each other, which is kind, kind of weird. The one, uh, I think, when Mbappé plays, plays out to Messi, and then Messi decides to take a shot himself, except of giving it back, goes over the bar. But it was still very much a uh, convincing performance with the second string. Carlos Soler scoring, scoring a 2 0. Hakimi, the fourth star, if you like, may mix 3 0 late on. Renato Sanchez and Ekitik, Ekitke, Ekiti, no, Ekitike gets, makes it 5. So uh, rather convincing there. Um, Strasbourg being rather bad, play against Lorient. So Lorient also can't can really get going. And I already said that the Marseille. Uh, match at Monaco was uh, remarkable because it was almost a full Louis Deux stadium, of course, full with Marseille fans. Uh, Alexis Sanchez has given Marseille the lead with a great panel penalty. However, Benyeda with, um, with a great free kick, then a penalty by Benyeda just before that. Uh, equals then Folland uh, in the 72nd at a game that was kind of uh, edging back and forth. He gives them the lead and um, it was not sure whether this isn't the decisive goal. No, it was not because uh, Vere 2 can pull one back um, thanks to Payet who had come on in the, in the 60 minute, kind of turned the um, complexion of the game and then from a uh, Payet corner, Kolesinac uh, gets the winner for Marseille. A pretty big win for them because they were also trending kind of in the wrong direction. Um, and so... PSG gone, Lars uh, sitting strong in the second spot and then Rennes and Marseille uh, being there, Lorient flip-flopping now, but you know, they have been second, they have been come, 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 coming down, but at, at the moment it's really that Lars are the second power in France, meaning I probably need a Lars shirt as well, 
And I also look a little bit at the relegation uh, spots. Strasbourg is a team that mm, after a good season last year does not look good. Angers have been steady in league. Uh, not look, look looking good, but it's rather, rather tight. Uh, if we go expected standings, we see definitely it's Brest, Ajaxo, Auxerre and Angers uh, that are at the moment going down uh, two promoted teams, of course, in there as well. As I said for League 1, uh, I don't know exactly when the fixtures will play, but they're also coming back early next year already. So um, you don't have to wait long for Messi and Neymar and of course Kylian to uh, get going again. But maybe we see a little bit more and the league could get a lot, lot, lot more exciting. I know, shorter video, I didn't see too much of these two leagues, but um, I think their development in the Eredivisie is so exciting that uh, I'm check I while I'm not seeing highlights all the time, I'm regularly checking the results uh, because I think this could be a real title race between the big three, potentially the big four in the Netherlands, so uh, currently the big four. So that may be exciting. And the league, uh, I think it's always fun to see PSG play if they play well. And there's another good stuff in there too. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.